Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Chemistry and Properties and Structures of Matter. In video number 23, we're going to be looking at the bonding spectrum. We've started to introduce this idea in a previous video um, that, that started to get to the idea that there's actually a continuum or a spectrum between uh, electronegativity difference of zero, um, which is uh, what you might call a pure covalent bond, and then a sliding scale up to a maximum value of electronegativity difference, which is a very strong ionic bond. But as with any spectrum, there's no clearly defined um, movement or gradations from one to the next. Okay, the colors just blend in the um, electromagnetic spectrum in the colors of the rainbow. You don't see clear stop and start points between each of the colors. They just kind of blend from one into the next. And it's really important that you carry that kind of a picture in your mind when you're thinking about um, the way we label chemical bonds as ionic or covalent. These are in actual fact just um, chemistry constructs which help us to explain the behavior that we see when substances interact with one another. So what we want to do is look at um, this idea of strongly ionic to purely covalent and another term for purely covalent is non-polar and I'll explain exactly what polar means in a subsequent slide. We looked at kind of the cutoff point between ionic and polar covalent as a value of around 1.5 to 1.7. It depends on what day, uh, whose book you're reading, oh, uh, a number of different factors as to exactly where this point is. But it's, it's about the fact that there is a, a sliding scale of where those uh, electrons are most likely to be and under what influence. The key point here is that the, is the electronegativity difference between two atoms increases, so the bond becomes more ionic in nature. And conversely, as the electronegativity difference between the atoms decreases, so it becomes more covalent. In the case of water, where we have an oxygen and a hydrogen and another hydrogen to form our water molecule, one of the atoms can exert a greater force of attraction on the electrons than the other. So if we consider that there are two electrons uh, that make up this particular bond, there's an electronegativity value for hydrogen and an electronegativity value for oxygen. The value for oxygen, the electronegativity for oxygen is greater than that for hydrogen. In fact, it's quite significantly greater. It's not sufficiently high to make it an ionic bond, but it is high enough to have a, exert a fairly strong pull on both of the electrons. As a consequence, they spend more time in the region of influence of the oxygen atom than they do the hydrogen. And this is a permanent kind of uh, an arrangement. So the way we represent that to, to distinguish it from an ionic bond is to say that this has a negative and a positive, but it's not an ionic nature. It's a slightly negative, a little delta, uh, the uh, lowercase Greek letter delta. Uh, delta negative for the oxygen and delta positive for the hydrogen. They're not ions, but they behave similarly um, by having a slightly positive and slightly negative charge, just not to the same extent as ionic substances do. Therefore, because we know about electrostatic attraction between oppositely charged particles, there is a um, polarity that's created in this case, and we call this a polar bond or a polar covalent bond. Now, there is a difference between polar bonding and polar molecules, and we are going to have to have a look at these in a little bit more detail as we go further on. Polar molecules are the result of covalent bonds between atoms that don't have the same electronegativity and therefore produce polar bonds, but whose polar bonds sum together to give an overall polarity. So previously we looked at water and we said there's a slight negative um, for the oxygen slight positives for the hydrogens and so in in effect if you were an electron the electron would be moving um, effectively down for a negative charge 
and up for a point positive charge. So we have an overall polarity in this molecule. If you kind of split it down the middle, then we have a negative region and we have a positive region. This is polarity in the molecule. More electronegative atoms will take a greater share of the electrons. This creates the negative charge. There are also unbonded electrons on the oxygen, which magnifies the effect of this polarity and gives us a very strong negative region around the oxygen. Sometimes the charge separations will cancel one another out. In the case of carbon dioxide, there is a negative uh, around the oxygens and a positive at the carbons. But if you were to look at, say, a point positive charge moving, it would be moving in opposite directions and these two cancel one another out. So while we have polar bonds, we have a non-polar molecule. Now these are quite complex concepts, which is why I've just run this video over a little bit and we're going to have to investigate them in a little bit more detail in class. Thanks for watching.